And through you, Madam Chair, this report provides a status update into the devastating fire at York Memorial. York Memorial and also provides an update on the restoration efforts. I will ask Executive Officer Steve Shaw to walk us through this report. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mr. Shaw. Uh, thank you. Through you, Madam Chair. Uh, so as uh, Associate Director Jackson indicated, this is a bit of a status update on uh, where we are with York Memorial and Two Trithui. Uh, just in terms of the actual fire itself, uh, as we understand now, uh, that they've un been unable to actually isolate a, a cause of the fire and it's listed as undetermined, uh, unable to isolate an ignition, an ignition source. And that's in, important in some respects because it talks to a few other issues that uh, we talked about earlier today. But in terms of damage assessment at York Memorial, uh, if you picture the York Memorial site, if you know it, there are basically three components to it. There's the York Memorial building proper. There is the Centennial building, which is down at the west end, which is the community center, uh, swimming pool, and the gymnasium that served York Memorial. And at the east end of the site, there is two Trithui, the admin building that uh, we operate a number of our admin uh, programs out of. So focusing on York Memorial as uh, the school itself, uh, it did suffer extensive damage as a result of the fire. Uh, Specifically in the area of the center of the building, that mass that comes from the front to the back, which was the auditorium and the front foyer, uh, was completely gutted. Uh, that contains uh, a large portion of the heritage site uh, designation at that building. Uh, in addition, uh, the front facade of the building is heritage designated, and uh, that wing of the school also suffered extensive damage to the point where the top floor uh, was de deemed to be unstable, and we have been slowly removing it brick by brick, working with City Heritage to make sure that we're pre preserving as much of the heritage components of the building as we possibly can, because uh, in any rebuild of that site, we will be required to reinstate that heritage feature, which is the front facade of the building as well as uh, the auditorium area. Um, there were two small wings on either side of the, of the auditorium, uh, that suffered some damage in terms of smoke and water. Uh, however, they are in, in the initial assessments re, um, able to be rehabilitated. However, we are currently doing the exercise to determine whether or not uh, actually repairing the structure uh, will be cost effective as opposed to knocking it down and building from scratch. Uh, as I said, we are working with our heritage uh, staff at the city uh, because of the designation that's there, and it has made this process a little bit slower than we normally would have gone through. Uh, in a similar kind of building with this type of damage, we probably would have come in with demolition crews and just demolished the building and would have had a, a field uh, just blank at that point, but because of the heritage, we've had to do it much differently. We are currently working under an order from the city to make the building safe, and uh, that order allows us to do a lot of things that we're currently doing, but once the building is deemed to be safe in the eyes of the city, that work will have to cease, and then we'll have to go through our regular building approval processes that we have uh, with the city. At the end of this process, what we expect we're going to see for the York Memorial Building is the basement level and the first floor of the, the main wing of the school will be preserved in its shell as it is right now. There will be a temporary roof installed over top of that building to stop any future uh, water infiltration. And we will be installing a small uh, boiler to be able to provide minimal heat in that area because we need to make sure that the frost doesn't get into the footings and, oops, <laughs> and cause some additional damages. Um, moving west to the Centennial Building, uh, that building didn't suffer as much damage from the fire as it did from smoke and water. Um, so we are now working with the city to try and get that community center back up and running because it serves a, a fairly uh, marginalized community. Uh, it's very well used and the city is quite anxious to get that uh, community center back online. It's complicated by the fact that there are no utilities currently serving the building. Everything came from the York building and were destroyed in the fire. So we're trying to figure out how we're going to get water, sewer, hydro, and heat into that building. Um, it's a small problem. We'll, we'll figure it out because there's 
a boiler room down at that end where we're going to have to put the boiler for our wing and so we'll probably be able to capitalize on that and get those buildings back, that building back up uh, shortly. Moving to the east end of the building, to the Tuthui building, it uh, suffered mostly smoke and some water damage uh, because of its proximity to the, to the building. Fire doors did their job, stopped a lot of the fire from spreading and so that was a good thing for us. Uh, however, that building, uh, because of the amount of smoke that was in there and the pressure of the smoke that went into that building, uh, has had to undergo extensive remediation and basically any fabric soft uh, surface that was in that uh, building has had to be removed uh, because the, the odor of the smoke is so pervasive that it's just something we can't get out. And so we're doing an extensive, almost a deep retrofit of the building, so we're replacing all of the carpeted areas, the ceiling tiles, we're sealing any of the block walls and repainting them. Uh, any furniture that has uh, fabric like uh, cubicle dividers, those kinds of things are all being replaced in order to make sure that there is no issue around odor or indoor air quality as we go forward. Uh, we anticipate that we will be back into the Trithui building in October. Uh, we are currently finalizing and finishing up some of the, uh, the remediation work that's been going on. Uh, furniture is being moved back into the space. Um, it is also complicated by the fact that there is no heat for that building. Uh, and so we are going to be putting a container, uh, a boiler room in a, in a shipping container basically outside of the building in order to provide uh, temporary heat for that building in order to get us back and get it through the winter. The long-term goal is you know, to have a boiler room in the new building, again, that will serve the entire complex, uh, but that's uh, some time off, so we need to make sure we have temporary heat in place uh, for the upcoming uh, heating season, which is fast approaching, although you wouldn't know that today, um, but it is fast approaching for us. Um, that's the update uh, in terms of the building, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have, and I know Mr. Schneider might uh, chime in on some of those issues as well. Does, does anybody have a question other than myself and Trustee Moyes? <laughs> All right, so uh, Trustee Moyes, and then I'd like to ask a question. Thank you. So off that, uh update. What is the timeline to have all this construction completed? You know, will you, are there permits that are going to be fast-tracked through the city? Um, do, we have a, do we have a timeline as to when that will be completed? Yeah. A few, Madam Chair. Uh, at the present time, we don't have a, an accurate timeline because, as you know, uh, we've got to get through this initial phase first, and then the building construction, uh, deconstruction as it is, will stop. At that point, we will then have to uh, work with the city in terms of uh, the, the site plan approval, uh, what we're going to rebuild there. We've got um, an issue around an accommodation review that we're trying to work through the, the ministry to get to look at that area so that we can make some long-term decisions around accommodation. Uh, and then it will also require us to go through the ministry approval processes and, and, uh, and the like. And so it's not going to be a short term. We, we're not expecting that this building will be up and running again in a year. It's uh, certainly a much longer term project than that. Okay, thank you. I'm going to pass this to Trustee Weiss. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. My question actually is along the same lines. You had mentioned, uh, I know you say that you don't quite know the timelines, but you had mentioned that you are trying to cap off the first floor. Do you anticipate that's going to be done before winter, or are we going to be doing this in the winter? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we anticipate that that will be done before winter. We're, as I say, we're just currently getting the, the wall down, and, and as soon as that's done, then they're going to put the temporary roof in place. Thank you. Does anyone else have any, I'm taking this back. Does anybody ask, Trustee Tonks. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. One quick question coming to mind in terms of uh, the heating for the boilers that are gonna be coming in to uh, support the Centennial Building and uh, the Chukui Building. Um, and I don't know how the boilers will work. Is it gonna be from the grid in terms of electricity coming in or is it gonna be running off generators? The only reason I say it and just sort of clued in is I've got a lot of complaints around one school where they've been running a generator constantly around the clock and that does become a community issue, so I don't know whether we're going to need generators to support this effort or we'll have electricity come in the grid. I have no clue about how boilers work <laughs> or anything of that nature. Yeah, where is she? He would know. Uh, through you, Madam Chair. 
So just in terms of what we're doing is there is power to the building. Uh, the power actually comes through the York, uh, sorry, through the Tutrathui building and then fed through York. Uh, so we are going to work on connecting the Centennial building to the power that's existing in the building and that will provide the electricity so there'll be no generator. The boilers will run the one that's going to be looking for the um, setup for the Centennial building will be actually inside the the shell of the building in the old boiler room. There, the old boiler room was much, much larger because in the old days we had much bigger boilers and because of efficiencies they're, they're a lot smaller. So we're able to hive off a little section where we can put a boiler in to provide that minimal heat for the foundation but also for the pool. Uh, it's too far and it's too difficult to connect the Trithui building. So we're going to have the, you know, the shipping container outside and it'll have a boiler inside. It'll be completely sealed, but it will be fed off of the grid as well. Are there any further questions for Mr. Shaw? Seeing none, uh, I'm going to add, call for the vote. Uh, do you want us to waive or to open the vote? Okay, we're going to open the vote. Trustee Wong, are you in favor? Yes, I am. Oh, Trustee Wong is in favor. Can we close the vote, please? Who's left? Okay, Trustee Nunziat is in favor. <laughs> Trustee Brown, are you in favor? Yes, thank you. That has been carried. Thank you very much.